in case you've somehow missed out on the announcement, CD Projekt Red officially announced that a fourth game in the series of Witcher games going by A New Saga Begins is on the way and it is being built with the use of Unreal Engine 5. That said, however, in terms of gameplay or even a story trailer, we've only heard of a recent rumor of a new video that's going to be released by the end of the month, and that this game will release before The Witcher 1 Remake, which I'll get to a little later. That was a good game. Yeah. Coming up behind that from roughly uh, three years ago, we've got over here once again The Elder Scrolls 6. You know, Skyrim is without a doubt one of the biggest games of all time and it goes back to more than 10 years ago. Elder Scrolls 6, on the other hand, is said to be way bigger than that and this. The game will be eventually teased according to a few leaks at E3 next year, if, however, Starfield is released by then. That's it, a 2026 or 7 release window will probably be likely at its earliest. Following the leak that exposed the gameplay for the Grand Theft Auto 6 just a little while ago, just so you get a better idea, we will now have about 15 playable characters to choose from in Grand Theft Auto 6. The game will release in 2025, probably in the middle, which was part of a larger information drop then, and that it's set in a modern day Vice City. Just keep it in mind. Months earlier, during the epic state of Unreal Stream, the same developers behind all Tomb Raider games, technically speaking so far, announced that they are developing a new Tomb Raider game and it's being built using Unreal Engine 5. They said our goal this time is to deliver a high quality cinematic experience, the kind one would truly expect for a next generation console exclusive. That's it, just keep it in mind, make sure to stay tuned for any updates regarding a release window. over here guys. IO Interactive, with the same folks behind all Hitman games to this day, well in case you didn't know, has been developing a James Bond game currently being referred to as simply just Project 
007. Now, there ain't really much to talk about or just go about regarding Project 007 either, considering it was announced more than two years ago. This game is indeed in full development mode and is said to be coming out either late 2024 or early 2025. Moving on. Got to play it, Dutch. Now, I've actually mentioned this one before, but just in case you're still waiting for this to happen, the Red Dead Redemption remaster is apparently cancelled with the long rumored Grand Theft Auto 4 remaster, which have actually been in development for several years now, I've heard. The main problem though was because of the trilogy of the first three games that came out a little earlier which were just too buggy. So whatever this happening, the project is now on hold and that we might get an update on this one sometime next year, if we're lucky. The way you left me was wrong. No, I hate to judge, but as it turns out, it's you or me. Welcome to Ganesha City, a dense, vertically built metropolis where the rich live at the top and the poor huddle in shanty towns built into the sides of the city's foundations. Once again over here we've got, well, just a quick mention guys, Beyond Good and Evil 2, a game that's been in development for more than 400 years, I'm not even kidding, but apparently still alive and kicking. Guys, this project actually had a job listing a month ago and hired a few more specialists and if that's any good indication, just so you know, we're probably looking at a 2024 release at its earliest. So keep it in mind. For Space Pirates. You'll also be able to fully customize your own rides, swapping out modules, wings, engines, equipment, and cosmetic options to tailor your machines to look good and hold their own in a fight. You'll need special equipment or skills to take on larger vessels, but your fighter ships are agile, able to execute barrel rolls, lock onto targets with homing missiles, and dogfight with police if you inadvertently break some city law like flying be stopped. My name is Sam Fisher. I'm a soldier. Not by law. If you've been a fan of old Splinter Cell games, which has always just been one of the most advanced games of its own time in its mechanics and gameplay, you probably know that it's been almost 10 years, 10 whole years since a new entry in the series. Now I've said it before, but just in case you missed it, roughly two months ago we came across a new leak that a Splinter Cell game is in the making and not acting as a prequel nor a sequel, but a remake, and only that it is in its very early stages of developer, so just keep it in mind for now. You believe I am everywhere. And I'll do it my way. Moving on we have Fable, the newest entry in the series of its beloved RPGs from almost 20 years ago. This new game, going by or referred to as only Fable, is now being developed by the same creators of Forza Horizon, so no doubt the game is going to be huge compared to its predecessors in terms of graphics and scale. This one over here is the announcement trailer we've got a couple of years ago that suggests it's going back to a more classic approach. Check it out, Fable is developed for PCs and Xbox consoles only. Not all stories have happy endings. But yours has yet to be written. You can give a man a gun and make him your weapon. I've mentioned this one at its review a few months ago, but in case you missed out, Antimatter Games, developers of the old first-person shooter series, came up with the reveal of a brand new entry called IGI Origins. They said that the game is now releasing across all gaming platforms, except Switch, sometime next year. And in case you're wondering, this is actually a prequel to the 2000 original game IGI, where they're going to be mostly reimagining the series with a modern take on the shooter genre itself. 
check it out just in case you missed it. You need to help scrimmage friend from foe. Next up we've got the day before, this is an open world MMO survival post pandemic or apocalyptic shooter which is set in basically America and once again a version where it's overrun with zombies and survivors, pretty much just both sides killing each other for food and stuff check it out. We just got the news that the day before is now actually releasing March 1st next year for the next generation of consoles in addition to PCs only with elements, as I've mentioned before, of PvE and PvP and there is a lot more. Now as in the case of Avatar, and although Ubisoft still hasn't committed to a specific date for Frontiers of Pandora over here, through a recent delay announcement we just got confirmation that the game is releasing mid to late next year at its earliest. Check it out. This is an open world game as stated by developers with the quality of the Avatar films themselves coming exclusively to PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and PCs only. <laughs> On number 13 and about maybe seven years since its initial reveal, we finally have about a couple of months ago some confirmation that the next Dragon Quest game Flames of Fate is now coming to platforms, PCs, Switch and it'll be the first game in the series to use Unreal Engine 5, which is just crazy. This game supposedly releasing early to mid next year and the gameplay we suspect to be very different from the previous entries. ドラゴンクエスト on and there's a good chance that you might have actually missed out on this one. See, around the same time last year, Bandai Namco confirmed that a new Ace Combat game is in development and being co-developed this time around with the company Ilka. Other than that, literally there's just no other news and details except Ace Combat 8 is also being built with the use of Unreal Engine 5. Just make sure to stay tuned in case you're wondering for any updates in the following months. It decreased to a singular course. Now I've said it before, uh, Remedy and Rockstar Games did announce earlier that they will be remaking Max Payne and Max Payne 2 going by the package name The Fall of the Max Payne. Now the fact is, this game has been in development for quite a while, in fact for 3 years now. They are being made from the ground up mainly because of the Remedy's newest engine and that it'll be a next generation console exclusive, possibly releasing by the end of next year. At his earliest. Walk away, blow town. That would have been the smart thing to do. Guess I wasn't that smart. I took my time cruising around the city in the snow.
Do you believe in ghosts? The dead coming back to haunt the living? Garrett, where are you? You were the one I thought I could trust. I don't know what you expect to find in there, but be careful. Don't become a ghost yourself. I've been a ghost all my life. Coming up behind that, we have Thief the Stealth Game, what is considered to be one of the greatest sneaking franchises ever created. In case you missed out on the news, a sequel for that game is currently in development and said to be released soon. Uh, that said, however, it's been literally five years since we've had an update on this one, and if you've been waiting to hear more about the following updates, just make sure to stay tuned in the following days. Primal. In the past, only small amounts have been controlled, but I dream. Today is the day we showed Baron Northcrest that the people are the lifeblood of this city. Didn't you know, Garrett? Master Thief. Greed is a sin, and you must be punished for your sins. Seals a mage in their home shall burn alongside him or her. Moving on by CD Projekt Red, uh, well technically to celebrate the 7th anniversary of The Witcher 3 a few months ago, after the remastered released version, we came across the news that the company is considering to have one of its Witcher games remade from the ground up in the following year. Highly likely Witcher 1 and that, as I've mentioned earlier, the game will be released after Witcher 4, so it'll be highly likely sometime in 2024, if not later. Moving on. Will burn! Burn in the eternal fire! Why are you helping her? Because she's a danger, a mortal one, a power that can destroy the world. You must find her, Geralt. Before the Wild Hunt does. I will find her. Or someone who knows what happened to her. Who are you? You know who I am. A legend cannot be killed, can it? The Wild Hunt will be here soon. They're coming for Siri. Hold them back! I've long awaited this, and you, my truth. And last but not least, specifically been waiting on an update ever since last year, Metroid Prime 4 is still on its track for a 2023 mid to late release. It's now being built in partnership with Retro, which is the same folks who used to make Donkey Kong games the last time 2014. Metroid Prime 4 is a prequel following Samus' decision to become a bounty hunter. The game is currently in development for the Nintendo Switch only, and all we've got in terms of footage is this. So keep it in mind. 